It's Nerf Earth Thursday! Woo! <laughs> what are we drinking tonight? Uh, what are we drinking? Hog All the bottles heaven. face away from me, so I can't see them. Avery Hog Heaven Barley Avery Wine. Avery Brewing Company. Barley Wine Style Ale. Indeed. Avery is in my top 10 of best breweries in the world. Haven't had a lot by Avery. I really like everything. I, I haven't had everything by Avery, I, but everything I've had, I've loved. Yeah. There, I haven't, I've not had a beer from them that I thought was like... And um, so we're taking it to the limits for me tonight because not being a huge barley wine fine, uh, barley wine fine, <laughs> a barley wine fine, a barley wine fan, <laughs> fan um, I'm not really sure how I'm going to feel about this. So... I'm kind of a, uh, I don't know, I don't dislike barley wine, and I don't really love it. I'm kind of in the middle. Yeah, I, you know, it's like, I think the first few times that I had a barley wine, it was too much. It was like, oh, I just had my first pale ale, too and much. then I did my first IPA, and now I'm going to do, do a barley wine. It's like, ooh, It was too much, too much what? Well, they're extremely hoppy, and they're extremely malty. Like, they just take all levels. Great. Yeah, they take all <laughs> levels of it to the extreme. Like, everything is just, and they're very complex. There's a lot of flavor. And I finally got around to trying Old Guardian um, yeah. a couple of months back with you, actually. Yeah, we did that for our... Our test run. Our Unseen New Brew Thursday. <laughs> we filmed several episodes a week. That and you it's actually see. permanently <laughs> lost because it was on the crashed hard drive. Yes. Oh. Wow. That's good because I wasn't wearing any clothes and no one wants to see that. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, whatever. Well, anyway. There goes the calendar. Yeah, the, word, the, the words you're looking for right now is anyway. <laughs> um, so we're going we're gonna to pop these open. Brad, what's your experience with Bobby Wines? <sighs> um... I don't have a lot of experience. The few times I've had barley wines, I just remember buying them because they had the highest alcohol content, and then <laughs> yeah. drinking them, and I'd see. Oh, to be oh young I see where they get the wine beer. from. <laughs> this definitely is more wine than beer. Yeah, I've had uh, a lot of people tell me that if you have a wine drinker that wants to step into to beer, that this is a good place to, to deal with that. Yeah, I would, I would agree. And you know, personally, I used just to just because wine. it says barley wine. Well, no, because it does have a lot of wine esque. And I, I'm sorry that I use that word again, but Dude, who cares? wine-esque characteristics. You be. Yeah, it's like, it's it's a got lot of that whiny body. characteristics. Yeah, it's got, exactly. <laughs> it's got that body to it. It's got that like feel of it sometimes. Oh, um, I'm smelling goodness. Yeah, these do smell delicious. Oh, looks good. Smells good. We are doing these out of our. <laughs> doing them. We're doing them out of our New Belgium brewing glasses. New Belgium with the bicycle on the Colorado? bottom. Is it not? Uh, yes. So these. So are... this is a Colorado evening yeah. as far as our beer goes. Ah, Colorado. Yes. And um, I, I like these glasses because they're very standard. You can get them very easily. Most liquor stores will carry these glasses. If you don't have a set of these glasses, I really suggest that you go out and get them because pretty much any style of beer can be drank out of this glass. Yeah. The snifter is a... Uh, this is a snifter, right? Yeah. It's my standby pretty much now at this point. And that's because it holds the aroma, what else? Yeah. Right, because it, it holds the head in. Like, you can you can get a little bit rambunctious with your pour, and it's not necessarily going to overflow. Right. Um, it's going to hold the head in a little better. It's going to keep the aromas better. When you go to drink it, you're going to get, like, because you're trapping a whole area of aroma down here, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. which is why it has, like, a fill line where it tells you, like, don't fill above this. Comma, four, seven... Wine. 0.47. Yeah, I think that's 0.47 liters. liters yeah, right? I'm just being stupid. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> that's all so that I think that's 12 ounces, isn't it? I don't know. Yeah, I believe that's 12 ounces. I'm not a good uh, metric converter. I really like this, though. This is this is actually... Uh, I was expecting more <laughs> of the barley wine. And I got more of the barley wine. Ah. Uh, what? Less emphasis on the wine. More oh. just on the barley. Oh, you were expecting barley wine, but right. you got barley wine. I think I, I think one of the characteristics exactly. you're going to get with these is that the alcohol, it's going to have a much more like um, alcohol taste to it. Yeah, as it should, but I, it's less so than I thought it would be. Right, because a lot of beers will try and mask that alcohol, and the barley wines really don't. They want to give you that kick, and right. that's, that's part of what you're going to get out of it. And it almost borders into a sour for me, which is why I don't think I liked them as much. Mm hmm. hmm. It's definitely got a hint of bitter towards the end there. Yeah. But it's, it's also got the malt. But it's yes. got a great malt profile, yeah. and the it's, it's really balancing out a lot yeah. for me. And I, that's, I, I really, I'm really actually liking this. And so, you know, dude, Avery I'm gonna... again, win. Mm -hmm. what, 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 what? Avery is a win. Like, oh, yeah, this, this is this, I love this. This tastes awesome. Especially, and right now it's, 
it's kind of warm too because uh, I bought these at the last minute. They sat in the freezer for maybe I don't know. We're drinking these European style. Forty minutes, <laughs> and they're 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 just slightly chilled, and it tastes mm -hmm. great. Yeah, just below room temperature, which is something you want for this kind of an, a beer yeah. because it's going to release all of its flavor and at that temperature. Aroma and everything. You're not going to be trapping. This the is great. This is it even smells great. Yeah, man. It's got a real unique smell to it too. It's not something mm. you expect from this particular beer. And I'm trying to, it, it's, it's got like a, it's a bready smell to it, but it's almost a, like a, It's like candy. It's a different type of bread. It's almost like a, like a garlic naan. <laughs> so what kind of cheese are we eating with this beer? We're doing a blue Stilton from England. Stilton. Yes, and this is a, um, and I know I wouldn't be able to pronounce. It's like an Emmentaler from Swiss. It's a, it's a cow's milk cheese that's been aged for about a hundred days. And the longer you age cheese, the more of a bite you're gonna get off of it. The All sharper right. the cheese is gonna be. And then this like is a cheese. Comte. Comte. Comte, which is uh, from, <laughs> I want to say, not England. It's from France. Yvonne, where's it from? France. France. Yeah. The beer has a really, really long-lasting, lingering flavor profile. Yeah. And so even just like the few minutes before the, my last sip and then this, I, I'm still getting that nice mix of flavors. Yeah. <clears throat> with the cracker, this, I don't know what crackers these are. Um, with this cracker mm -hmm. and the cheese, it tastes great. I'm gonna this try is a cracker just pepper cracker. Uh, um, I'm just gonna say, this is a good pairing, but it's not like jumping out at me. I've tried each cheese with the beer. No, and see this nothing's, is... Nothing's really right. kind of combining in like the this way This is an that... aperitif, um, uh, an aperitif pairing. So you're not gonna get the same kind of like, I at least in my sensual. my personal opinion, like with each type of pairing does different things for you. Like when you do an aperitif where it's like, this is what you do before the meal. Like you've got a plate of cheese out, you've got the barley wine, and it's not destroying people's palates where right. it's like, you know, you're not flavor orgasming before you even have your main entree, you know? Um, no, totally. But then you have your main dinner and it steps up a little bit. Like, That's you sweet. get the porks and that, that kind of thing. And it's like, oh my God, this is pretty incredible. Really, the, the, the only time I've really experienced that moment of like, I've achieved nirvana is with dessert parents. Because yeah. that's when it's like, and I think it's almost like it's designed that way where it's like, okay, you're not going to be putting anything else in your mouth, food wise. And so. <laughs> Had to go there. <laughs> this is it. Like, you are going to experience everything at this very moment. Mm -hmm. Did you try that's, it? No, that makes sense. Did you try it with just the cheese, or is it always made with the cheese and a cracker? Always I always do cheese and cracker. Because yeah. I tried it with just that a piece of that cheese, mm -hmm. and uh, the beer kind of, you eat the cheese, you drink the beer, and it kind of overpowers it. It's but then go. at the end, it blends very well. And I think the cracker definitely mellows that out. Mm-hmm. So eat the cheese, try, and I think you'll agree. I, I liked it. Well, the, uh, some of these crackers are flavored as well, which I was talking about earlier, which is that I like to do most, if I'm using a cracker, I, I like to do something yeah, you're right. yeah, very yeah. plain with the cracker. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't add to the flavor profile of the cheese. But, the cheese but what happens when we run out of plain crackers, which we're about to, in two well, crackers? I have not. Then we have to wrestle to the death with the last one. <laughs> All right, I got the battle of We have to have like a thumb <laughs> war or something. I have the really odd sense of like centered balance. <laughs> <laughs> I will break both these glass things. <laughs> cheese almost smells like a uh, Parmesan cheese. Which one? The, this, uh, this one. Yeah, because it's, the, it's, got, it's um, the same kind of style of cheese. Oh, it doesn't taste like Parmesan cheese though? No. Wow, that's weird. <laughs> So now you just have me eating cheese. Oh, it goes well with the beer, though. Oh, yeah. Have you ever tried the blue? This goes good in a really good way. It's, it's like and this you, goes good yeah, in a really but, different way. But it's right. the, the, this is what it's like for me, if I can graph this. Uh, you get the cheese in your mouth, and you're like, oh, it tastes. And then the taste dies in. And then you take a sip of the beer, and the beer goes like, whoa, there's the beer. And then the beer kind of kind of cut. And then at the end, they both kind of tail off. They and meet, they and they're happy together. Yeah. Yes. I agree. Yeah, well, hopefully that wasn't too. It's far like off. a love story for. Can you see my hands? This is a really interesting uh, deal. But we I got see what you're saying with here. the aperitif. It is very much. It's not, a much more mild not, pairing. Right. The cracker, I think the crackers really dilute the whole flavor of the beer. I, I don't. I don't. And I know maybe that's the point of eating the cracker mm -hmm. beer, but 
I like it more with just the cheese. I think, and you can yeah. do that, and absolutely. And, and I totally agree. I would, I would like to age this beer. Yeah, Thoughts? I can see that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is a very high ABV. I, I'm It'd not. Be good I mean, to we age just it. bought this. If we had aged this, that might even make this balance more with what we're eating. I like this beer a lot. Um, I, I, like I said, I'm kind of in the middle with <clears throat> the whole barley wine beer. I think, yeah. And I. Uh, Stone Stone's uh, Old Guardian is really, really good. I like that one a lot. Uh, the only other one I've had, this shows my experience with barley wine, is the uh, Flying Dog. Um, I don't know what it's called, but it's their barley wine. Oh, you're talking wine. about that's a barley wine? Mm -hmm. I didn't even know. Yeah, we had it, I think, on our Unseen New Beer Thursday episode. And it, it just didn't taste all that great. This, this is really good. I would drink this alone. I don't need to pair this up with anything. Um, it's got a good balance of the hops, especially at 100 IBUs. And room temperature? Mm hmm I really can't taste, I mean, I can taste the hops, but it's not like punching me in the yeah. face. It's right. really well balanced. It's a really, really well, good and I beer. Well, I think part of it too, like the Flying Dog one that we had, um, was in a seven ounce bottle, because they sell that seven ounce bottle. Right, it was, in, it was in that right. sampler pack. Yeah. And um, what I've found is that bottle size makes a big difference as mm. to what you're getting from a beer. Hmm. And so, and the smaller it does is not better. True. Yeah. Like we did, we did West Mall once, and we had the big bottles. And we had little bottles, and the little bottles tasted like I, I remember was, that. Yeah, they yeah. tasted like ass. They that were was, really that bad. was a really interesting episode. Yeah, it was just and then like, we oh, then wow. we popped the the two big bottles that we had, and we started drinking those, and it was like, wow, this actually tastes really good. It was a complete different flavor. Yeah. I think Avery's one of those breweries that I <laughs> when I see something. I'm more willing to try something new from Avery as far as style-wise goes than I am other breweries, you know? I would have said that before this podcast, and I, yeah, now this just reconfirms that. Right, and yeah. that's, like, if I look at it and go, oh, if Avery had a sour, and I think they do, I have to look into that, but if that is sour, I would try Avery's sour before I would try anybody else's because I just, I trust their brewers to be like, we are going to hit the style the way it's supposed to, yeah. and we're going to add yeah. our own little kind of kick that's going to make it that much better. Uh, the only other Avery beer I've had actually was White Rascal, and I'm a Belgian fan, so I was expecting much from it. It was a white Belgian style, mm -hmm. and yeah. it was really good. You had it out of the it's, bottle too, right? Uh, like, yes. And you liked I didn't it. drink it out of the bottle, but it, yes, right, I purchased but it, it in yeah, a bottle. Yeah, it was a bottle, because yeah, yeah. I've only had White Rascal on tap, uh, which... You know, tap and bottle are two different right, experiences, totally. and so, but yeah, and I really like White Rascal because that's that's one of the standards at Stone Brewing Company. They always have that on tap. Oh, okay, yeah. So yeah, no, it was really yeah. good. Well, overall, I think this uh, this episode was great. As is this great, this beer is just awesome. Uh, I would definitely drink it again, and uh, yeah. So as always, stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe. If you were in, if you were in my yeah. situation where you had, I had a shaker glass by the way, a pint glass. <laughs> and in that in that case, pour it down the side. Okay, thank you. Yeah, just because yeah. you don't have this bulbous area. Right. That's all I had. To collect. And so it was like, no, I know. And I started pouring down the center, and I was like, oh I've man. I've seen his glass collection. It's not all he has. Oh god. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Called you out. It that was, that was, was my version of the Fibonacci thing. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Touche. Wait, what? I missed that. Touche. Uh, nothing clean, right? <laughs> <laughs> Next oh, week, yeah. I will have every beer glass in threes. I'm calling you out. Ooh. I will have them. Touche, brother. I have the power of Amazon. <laughs>